Howdy doodly do, people! It's me and Robson here. Moodbox 2011. This is the beta release candidate. Uh, it's not out yet. Um, you know, the displacement is great because it's not just something that um, you can use for a stencil. You can also use it for a stamp. Now, this is a st simple one that I've just made. Now, if we have a look at this one, it looks like a few knobbly bits, but it's not. It's mushrooms! Alright, you notice it's not just going at the surface normal, it's going in a 3D vector di uh, direction, uh, dictated by a 32 bit vector displacement map, which comes, incidentally, I'll show you, in uh, three types. So, if we assume those are correct, you've got tangent, object, and world space, 32 bit, you've got all the usual controls, okay? Um, now, there's all sorts you can do, as I say, as stencils. Um, let's find the one that's interesting. I just want to find a stone or something. That'll do. Right. So let's see. We've got this one here. Now bring it down in size a little bit. And this is a rock texture I'm using on a project at the moment. So I'll just step down a couple of levels of speed. And then just go. Now the thing about this texture is it's got a lot of undercuts. Um, of course, you can turn your layer up if you want to. Let's go 200. Displace in two directions. So you go, it's got undercuts and all sorts as well. Right, so let's just get rid of that for the moment because I'll create a new scene. Because there's one thing I know you're all going to want to see, and that is the posing. Right, simple as this. Create a joint like that, pose it. You do it that way. Of course, you can actually pull it. You can scale it as well. I can't do it as easily on the rear wagon, but you see what I mean. Um, so let's assume, for the moment, I'll undo all this, that this man is carrying, for whatever reason, a sphere. All right, so let's take our sphere, and I'll quickly scale it down and position it, just so it looks like he's got a, a football or a ball or something. Okay. So let's see, we've got that on his hand like that. We'll pretend he's carrying it by a handle, okay? So, I quickly select my default human. Right, so what do we do if we want that to move with that? Oh, shit, we'll the ball to move with the hand. It's dead simple. Take that, do what it did before, right? Now, we can paint weights, so let's just make that big, right? And quickly. Let's take it up to 100. Paint the weights for this. Make sure this side's done. All right. Now, when we pause it, it'll do that. See? If you want to be really daring, you can scale it down or up. Like that. So there you go. You can have this big ball to whack people over the head with it. And that's as simple as that. Create another joint. Instantly, if you've got a skeleton um, already uh, rigged up for whatever reason, then it's uh, a simple matter of importing it. So you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. And you can pose it like that. And get them down like that. Got to do something with a leg, I think. So you can have both his legs there and pose them and um, do all sorts of crazy stuff. So you get the basic idea. And that's the posing. Um, now let's assume we get rid of this ball. Like that. That we want to texture this block. Alright. I'll just pause it while I find my textures. Right. So. I'll pick a texture. Those of you that uh, have my first book might be able to recognise some of these. Right, so let's say we're going to put this texture on. I've got uh, the exposure quite high at the moment um, because I was using vector displacement maps. So we've got that in there. Um, we're going to use that as a texture. But we want to cover the whole character with that, okay? So let's show what you can do. You can go mesh, flatten the UV space. We'll have to select the mesh first. Mesh, 
flattened UV space, and there you go. Look, simple as that. You see that there? That's a UV version. Now, I'll tear that in there. I'm going to use a stencil. Bring the size down to something. We'll assume that's the right size. If not, we could go into our stencil and just go use tiles. All right, this is not a title of texture, but uh, we'll assume it is for the moment. And then you can get that in there, create a paint layer like this, and just go over the top like that for all the elements in the scene, which would be great to get a, uh, a base texture on something. Right, tear that off, then go mesh, unflatten from UV space, and there's our texture. And all we'd have to do then is to go around with this and just fix a few themes, sort of like this, you know. And you've got your base texture. Very simple. Simple stuff, really useful, and the sort of thing you'll be using time and time again, to be honest. Now remember, I would say when you're using um, posing, when you get your hands on this, uh, that you will, you're going to want to um, set your tangent mirroring, because if you set this on, uh, let's put the paintbrush on, I'll put it on red, oh by the way, you see the new colour picker? I hope so. Um, so let's say we've got this one here, take the size down a bit, if I use X, you can see it's all over the place, that's not going down his arm. So what you'd have to do is a step down, take my ring off obviously, for those that don't know, and select two faces, without if I had uh, it out of flat shaded, boom, boom, right, mesh, set topological axis. Then, when I go back into my paint tools, I'll set it on tangent, see, we'll even do these ears because they're in different spaces, his eyes, like that, see, do his end of his thumb, see how it's mirrored on over there, so that's a useful thing to remember. I'll be covering a whole load of stuff. Oh, this is quite useful, all this stuff down here. Interesting stuff. Um, we have a blur brush now. So let's assume that I want to uh, blur this ed edge here. In fact, let's take the blur strand way up like that. And I can mix this over. It actually behaves a little bit like a watercolour. Like adding water. Dodge. Burn. Contrast. So let's have some contrast to these areas. Sponge. But let's take that up so you can see what it does, and that will obviously desaturate. Hue. Now I can add a, a real sort of fleshy colour to this, and just go over the top. And in fact, what we'll do to make it even more noticeable is we'll put a bright green. And you can see it adds green to all the textures like that. Hue shift, and we can see what hue shift we want. Like that, we can change the hue shift up with this. And you get different colours. There's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do, okay? Invert, well obviously that fits yourself. But um, there's a whole lot of stuff. Uh, pose tools, you can move the pivot round, so we could take that and we could move this pivot up to here, and we could repose it, you know, from somewhere else. A little nifty trick, right? Let's say, if you're, for whatever reason, you want to look like he's got broken legs. You think, oh, wait a minute, I want to have this bit on here on. You can actually paint the weights in later on. You'll make a hell of a mess of it, obviously. But you can have, um, or you can unpaint weights. You want to set that very low, obviously, when you're doing that. And that you do. All sorts of crazy stuff. Um, the uh, the amplifier brush is actually it's just a rename brush. These ones are just presets presets of mine, sharp ones. You can use all sorts of things with all sorts. You've also got the Mudbox community thingy there. Where uh, the dentist was actually viewed one of the voted one of the uh, models of the month, by the way. There's all sorts. There's a lot of stuff in Mudbox 2011. Again, Sony and Beta. We've made a crazy ass model, but hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. Let's give you a bit of a heads up. Bye, see, bye, see.